Hey guys, what is up? My name is Vulcan and welcome to my channel. So I'm just going to quickly flash some things on the screen so you can understand what I'm talking about. I've been competing in the Murano Cup. It's put on by Revol Amar. Basically he invites um, like the best pro players from all over the world. It's like 100 pro players and they compete in um, a tournament to see who is the best player. I mean, that's kind of the idea. It's not a team competition like CRL. It's a solo competition. And so far, I am 7 and 0 in the Murano Cup, which means I've lost games along the way, but I have not lost a best of three. So in my most recent two best of threes, well, actually, I won today. Spoiler alert. If you want to see that gameplay, go watch, um, uh, what is it, Revol Amar's stream. And you can see I, I showed us like all of his links up on this on the screen. But the match I'm going to show you today is against Mikhail. If you guys don't know who Mikhail is, it's basically a pro, I think Spanish player. And um, I don't think this is the account he did it on. Yeah, but he's he finished number one in the world with Pekka. Okay, so first of all, before we start the game, this is like a 50-50 matchup. I mean, maybe it's in slight favor for the balloon deck. But you have to play it right. As the the Royal Giant player, you're probably trying to like stack furnaces because if you can get down multiple furnaces, usually you can overwhelm your opponent. And then as the the balloon player, what you're trying to do is get chip damage and basically not let them stack furnaces. So to start off this game, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of pressure. I don't know what deck he's running yet, um, but I did scout him, so I know like the kind of deck he's running. Here I see you is. I mean already like. You can kind of guess that it's Royal Giant because there's really not a lot of EWIS decks in the meta. I was thinking right now it's either Royal Giant or it's Pekka, right? So I just play Ice Golem to defend there. Um, I do let the EWIS get like one hit in my tower. That's kind of bad defense by, by my part because I didn't snowball early enough at the start. So here, I'll polish real quick. This is a really important play. I could go opposite lane of the Furnace, right? Um, but if I did that, he would pretty easily defend my balloon. He could have played Mega Minion and Baby Dragon on the opposite side and my balloon would not have got a hit on the tower. And then the furnace would have been still alive and the furnace would have kept like chipping me basically. It would have kept getting damage on my tower and I probably would have been behind overall. So it's actually good to use your balloon in this in this matchup at least to um, kill the furnace and then I send the miner just to get chip damage on his tower. So he has a good defense here. Um, I don't think I even get any damage on this tower. Yeah, I don't, but as you can see, like, I'm not terribly behind an elixir. Um, I do have to spend an ice golem, so I'm down two elixir, but it's totally fine because kind of my goal here is to outcycle him, right? So here we're just gonna wait, wait till, we're waiting for his move. He's up elixir right now. So there he goes, baby dragon on the back, and I could go bar barrel there, but one interesting thing that I like to do in Clash Royale is you don't when you're at 10 elixir right you play a card that can counter push the only time you should play your cheapest card to defend is when you're not at 10 elixir so if i play a bar barrel here my bar barrel isn't going to counter push so and then if i play my rascals they're they're going to kill the baby dragon and they're going to counter push which means it's it's basically a win for me because i'm not down a whole lot of elixir so it's a it's a good play so they're yeah, my rascals, you know, they just defend the baby dragon. No big deal. They're kind of pushing. I could have even split my rascals, like, um, one rascal girl towards the left. That actually probably would have been the better play in that situation. Here, I play a bar barrel. That's a... It's a questionable bar barrel. I mean, it gets one hit in my tower, but it's not a big deal. Here, I just go with balloon minor. What I'm thinking right now is... I just want to kill the furnace, right? He's, he's going to use a furnace to defend. Otherwise, my balloon will get hit on his tower. And I was trying to get some tip, chip damage with the miner. I even snowballed. Um, I don't know if the snowball was necessary. That was probably a little bit of an overcommitment there. But as you can see, we're still pretty even on Elixir. Um, he is up one Elixir. There he goes, Royal Giant in the back. Now I have to make sure to keep up the pressure. Oh, I leaked like one Elixir there. That wasn't good. I just don't want him to build up a big Royal Giant Lightning Push, right? So I go opposite lane with my Balloon Miner, I just bait out his Baby Dragon, I bait out um, his Furnace, and so here I play my Inferno Tower. Um, I played a little bit higher just so that it can start hitting the Royal Giant quicker. I mean, it doesn't make that much of a difference. 
And I just played Ice Skull on the block to Baby Dragon. Um, the minor was... The idea behind that was because I had a counter-pushing Bats and I had counter-pushing um, Rascals. So even though I don't want to go for the same lane as him, I just didn't want to let my troops die, right? So I just wanted him to spend a little bit of Elixir. And the goal was definitely not to take my tower in this push. So here I go... I go with Barbaro Balloon. I don't really need Barbaro for defense. And as you can see, he had a lot of troops on the left. So I did not want him to like stack up a big push, which was the whole purpose of that barb barrel. Um, there, I split I split my rascals, right? What I'm thinking here is, well, if I play... I don't really have any other good plays at this moment. And if I play my um, all in rascals in one lane, you're just going to get barb barrel value. So it makes sense to split them. I even go with a prediction barb barrel. Here, I'm just like... The goal is, is still not necessarily to take his tower, but it's just to make him spend elixir so he can't build up a push where he has enough elixir for both support troops to kill my rascal and for lightning to kill my inferno tower. So there, yeah, he gets he gets a lot of damage from my tower. It's really, um, it's not looking good. Like, I don't even know how I win it at this point. I was, tell you what, I was probably pretty scared at this moment. But we're still going to keep trying hard. Um, I play my Ice Golem. And I'm guessing he plays... I probably switch lanes here. Yes, I do switch lanes. And the reason why is, again, because... I just don't want him to... He, he played his Mega Minion, first of all. Which is like a really good counter. And I just don't want him to be able to build up a big push. I play my Snowball because it means it'll one-shot the Furnace. So that's good Snowball play. Ice Golem just to um, defend everything. So just like... Kind of defending for as little elixir as possible. Kind of trying to outcycle his furnace. Um, here I switch lanes again because even if he plays Royal Giant in front of this on the counter push, he's not going to have enough elixir for the Inferno Tower. And since I have more damage than the right tower, I still want to go for the right tower. I just don't. I just don't want him to build up a big enough push. There goes Royal Giant on the bridge. Um, that was a mistake. That was a bad Royal Giant. I play a high inferno tower just in case he, he has lightning. I don't want him to be able to lightning the tower and the inferno tower. And since he didn't have any support troops along with that royal giant, playing the inferno tower high was fine because he also didn't have e in cycle. So there's basically no way he could reset that inferno tower. Um, so here, yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm kind of trying to finish him off with the chip damage. I mean, I can. He plays another questionable lightning like. That, that lightning might have lost in the game. Here, I was leaking elixir because I was like, I, I want to go in this lane, but I have I have no cards to play in the back, no cards to play the bridge. So I actually ended up playing my balloon into the mega minion. And um, I did, I played my bats and basically I got the death damage in the tower and I won the game. So if I remember correctly, after I beat him in the balloon versus royal giant matchup, he decided to ban baby dragon. So my choice was, Lava Loon, and the reason why is because Baby Dragon, like, is really good against, um, Lava Loon. I think a lot of Baby Dragon decks, like, beat Lava Loon, and also, this deck is just really solid versus all the decks he uses. Like, as I said, I scouted him beforehand, so I just thought, you know what, maybe he doesn't hard counter anything he has, but it'll get a pretty decent matchup, and he probably won't expect it. So, starting off the game with Lava Loon, um, you always want to get down a Tombstone. That's, like, that's the main thing, because once you have a Tombstone down, you can safely drop a Lava Hound, and unless they have a Balloon deck, really, there's the Tombstone will allow them to not be able to punish you. So I'm making a little bit of Elixir there, um, because even though I had Tombstone in hand, right, I didn't want to play it right away because I didn't have Lava Hound anywhere, anywhere near in hand, so it was like, I could have played it, but I just didn't feel like it. There, he uses Miner to kill my Tombstone. Uh, just cycling troops in the back. I still... I don't know what deck he's playing. He goes with that. So I just go with Balloon. I could have saved up for Lava Hound in the back. But I figure since he uses Mega Minion and he uses Zap, I would just go with Balloon. Um, just to keep the counter pushing minions alive. And just kind of see what he has. There, He over defends with um, Hunter. As you can see, I was up like 4 Elixir. So... And I, and I knew that at the time, so it made sense to drop my Lava Hound at the back. I'm thinking, I have Barbarians in Cycle also, so since he just uses Fireball, he has nothing to kill my Barbarians. And he has he has no idea what deck I'm using at this point. Like, I guarantee he was 
really confused. Um, here, do I fireball that? Yes, I do. Yeah, that's a smart play. Because I think even if he zaps there, my Mega Minion would still stay alive. So he had to use something else to kill it. Um, and then interesting thing here is that I don't even know what happened with that. Like, how did that Mega Minion stay alive? I kind of got lucky <laughs> that the Hunter did not hit the Mega Minion. But even if it did, I still would have got... I still would have killed the Mega Minion or the Hunter with the Lava Hound. It still would have got maybe a third of his tower HP, but I definitely got lucky. And his giant, there's no way his giant was breaking through because I had barbarians in cycle. So yeah, as you can see, um, and then here's another really important thing. Look at his elixir right now. I, when I play a game, I keep track of his elixir in my head or I kind of try to keep track of the trades. I made a video on it once. And here, there's no way he's gonna have enough elixir to defend both the barbarians and the balloon, right? He has four elixir and the only really defense he has for barbarians would be fireball, and he also doesn't even have any air troops in hand. At the mo at this moment, I, I didn't realize he didn't have any air troops in hand, but I was just thinking, he can't defend both lanes at the same time. So I go with the balloon at the bridge in the right lane, and then the left lane has... Well, he even misses <laughs> he even misses the fireball. So yeah, that balloon, it completely takes his tower. Not really much he can do about it. It, it was really that the hunter... Versus the Mega Minion when the Mega Minion killed the Hunter. That's what lost the game for him. And I I admit, I kind of got lucky in that part. But I think even if that didn't happen, I still could have won the game. So now from here on out, I'm basically... I just defend for the rest of the game. Like, um, I put him over variants. I mean, really, nothing special. I just go Lava Hunt, same lane. Full on defense, Fireball Zap. And yeah, I got the victory. I got the 2-0 sweep versus Mikhail. Which is kind of... I mean, he's a good player, so I, I was pretty pretty happy with that. And then my next my next match that I'm going to share today was versus Islaw. So Islaw is... Is he French? I don't know. He was like in CCGS a long time ago. He's just like a really good player. Um, he kind of took a break from the game, so he's not like training as hard as a lot of people. But even so, he's he's still a, a definitely like well above average player. So, in this first game, I was looking at his deck pool, and I was thinking, this man uses a lot of lightning and not a lot of fireball. So, I'm like, Mortar Minion Horde is just really solid versus his deck pool. So, starting off the game here, I go with Spear Goblins at the bridge. I could have also gone with Miner at the bridge. Um, it honestly doesn't really make that much of a difference. Both of them are pretty good plays. Normally, I would go with Miners. I just kind of felt, felt like going with Spear Goblins at that exact moment. So there, I split my Rascals just because, you know, I don't want to give them Barbaral value. It's, it's usually a good play to split your Rascals like that. And then, I kind of... I already guessed he had Golem, right? Because as I said, I scout my opponents, so I see a couple cards, and I know exactly what they're running most of the time. So there, I go with my Miner, I go with... Because he uses Barbaral, I go with my, um, my Goblin Gang, and it works out pretty well. And then there, I also go with... I defend a Minion Horde and counter push with Barbarian Barrel. Just a tank for my Minion Horde, because I know he has like no Fireball or no Poison. I know that this deck has Lightning at this moment. Um, there, I could have defended with Rascals, but the interesting thing is that if I would have, I would have been down Elixir. So instead of defending with Rascals, I just tank a little bit of tower damage. I go Miner in the back again, knowing that his Tornado is, is not in Cycle. I wasn't sure how close it was in Cycle. I just knew it wasn't in Cycle, so that Miner was going to get a lot of value. Now here, that's interesting, right? Because I could have gone with Mortar at the bridge. Maybe even in retrospect, Mortar at the bridge would have been smart. But if, for example, I go Mortar at the bridge and he defends with Golem and then he gets, um, he, you know, he uses Golem to block my Mortar. I knew that he had enough flicks for Golem in cycle, so I just didn't want him to, like, Golem block my Mortar, basically. So here, I go with Mortar at the bridge. This is also an interesting play because potentially... I want to set up Mortar on defense, but I'm thinking since he has no Fireball, no Poison, I can get some damage off the Mortar, and also since it's in single Elixir, then I can use my Minion Horde to kill a Golem, and then my Rascals to clean up. So kind of the idea here is that he doesn't have Fireball Poison, so the, the Minion Horde hopefully gets a lot of value. So yeah, in retrospect, I'm still not sure if that was the best of Mortar, but it'll end up working out for me. I got two shots off on the tower, um, and here I go with Mini Horde. I go with it as quick as possible, right? 
because even if he plays Baby Dragon here, it'll still kill most of the Golem. And I was thinking, I don't think Baby Dragon is right in Cycle, so it was it was good. Um, I it got half the Golem's health, and then I play Rascals, and it pretty much it pretty much cleans up the Golem. So that was um, pretty good for me. And here, obviously, I just play a Miner because I have Counter Push. Really, nothing too special about that. Um, I probably play my Goblin Gang all the way in the back. Yep, this is just to stop the Prince. He doesn't have logs, so it's not like he could log the Goblin Gang and it would die. Um, I play my Mortar in the middle. And the reason why is just because I, I needed to play my Mortar, but I didn't want to play it right on top of the Prince. And then also, if I um, play my Mortar there, he's not going to have... Even if he blocks with Golem, he's not going to have enough Elixir to like build up a giant push. So that's, that's also an important thing. Um, I actually wanted him to block with Golem there because, as I said, he won't have enough Elixir for a giant push. And I even got lucky and got a hit on his tower. So there, I just play a mini horde as quick as possible, just trying to kill the Golem HP. Um, because once the Golem's dead, you can just use Rascals and Fireball to clean up everything else. As you can see, this, this gets a little bit sketchy, but I'm just defending with Golem Gang. I'm not, you know, I'm not panicking. And here, here's another interesting thing. I was guessing, I wasn't positive, but I was guessing that he didn't have enough elixir for Golem. So I quickly played my Mortar, even though I wasn't at 10 elixir. It wasn't even to block the Baby Dragon. It did block it, but I quickly also played it because I knew that he wouldn't have enough elixir for Golem, which means I can just, like, bait out some cards. I could bait out his ground defense cards, and then I can go with Miner in the back because I'll have nothing for ground, and I can Fireball, and basically cycle two Miner Fireballs and win the game. So here, the... The Mortar does its job, it baits out 6 Elixir, which is like, totally fine for me. That was literally just to bait out the Elixir, right? And then I think I'd probably go... I'll go with Rascals. I wasn't sure if he was going to go Golem with the bridge there. And also, I knew he had Prince of Cycles, so I just want, didn't want to risk it. Um, and here's interesting, because... Normally, you wouldn't want to go, like, same lane as a Golem like this, but I knew that, since it's literally just to finish off the game, he's not going to have enough Elixir to kill both my Minion Horde and defend the miner so that was kind of the idea there he chose to go for the miner which i mean at this point i pretty much have the game won as long as i play right so it wasn't even necessarily a mistake it was just kind of the choice that he had to make if he didn't want my miner to take his tower so again i just keep up the pressure um and yeah he just he just gave up at that point so this next game i went with rg um, Fireball. And it's interesting because Lightning is actually overall a better deck, but I just thought that versus the decks that he uses, um, I would prefer to use Fireball. And I think he banned, yeah, he banned Miner, so that was also an interesting thing to note. Okay, so in this game, um, I'm using Royal Giant, which I'm pretty good at Royal Giant. I just start off the game with the Furnace. It's always best to start off there because with Royal Giant, like, kind of the idea is that you get down a Furnace, and then you play Royal Giant in the back. That's basically the main game plan. And then a double elixir, usually you don't want to play Royal Giant in the back. Usually you want to um, play it at the bridge on it, like a counter push, for example. So here, I kind of realized as soon as I see e was Furnace, like, the only deck in the meta that has e was Furnace is Royal Giant. So right away, I know that it's a mirror match. And in the mirror match, you don't really want to play Royal Giant at the bridge unless you have a counter push. You pretty much always want to play Royal Giant in the back so I just played in the back um, he mirrors my Royal Giant in the back and here I don't want to give him lightning value right um, so I just play my Lumberjack and I'm probably not even gonna play my Ewiz because as I said I don't want to give him lightning value I have saved my Burp so far for his guard so I just use my Burp to kill his guard it's completely fine there he didn't have enough elixir for lightning so I went ahead with Mega Minion just to like kill his baby dragon and baby dragon doesn't die but um it's fine i'm up like three elixir interesting there also that he goes with furnace at that i didn't even know like what his elixir was at this moment but i go with baby dragon flying over the the river if you play it in that spot as you can see neither of the towers will hit it and i could use fireball to kill the mega minion so that was just like um, a good heads up play on my part. And also, I had a suspicion he wasn't a 10 Elixir, but I really wasn't sure at the moment. So there, since I killed his Furnace, this is huge. Um, he can't, like, 
basically that's good. I, I always want to get it on a furnace because if I go to Royal Giant in the back and I don't have a furnace down, he can punish me at the bridge, but as you can see, since I have a furnace down, punishing at the bridge was not the right play. This was his big mistake in this matchup. He should have just kept going the same lane as me and getting lightning value, but he kept trying to go Royal Giant at the bridge, which is really going to um, cost him. So here I go with this. He could lightning, but it wouldn't kill everything, so lightning wasn't necessarily a good play in that situation. Um, and as you can see, I just stack, I stack another furnace. I'm just keeping the furnaces alive. Honestly, I don't know why I played furnace in the right there. I should have played furnace in the left. That would have been the smarter play. So that actually was a bit of a misplay. Here I go with my lumberjack, and he doesn't have enough elixir for lightning here. I mean, so I just defend like with lumberjack, and then I I play my e whiz because I don't want the mega minion to like kill everything. I play my Mega Minion, I Fireball this, this is good Fireball value, it's gonna get like, it's gonna kill a lot of stuff. Um, and then here you're gonna see I play a Furnace again, I'm like, I play this matchup really safe, I always get down a Furnace before I play Royal Giant. Um, so you can see I, I get down my Furnace, and there I'm, I could go, normally you wanna go Royal Giant in the back, but, um, since the E-Wiz is there also, I didn't want it to completely kill my my furnace and I want and then the baby dragon went and killed his furnace which was good for me. And so here I'm guessing I'm guessing to go with furnace, yep, as I said, always get down to furnace before I roll a giant. That, that's always what I do. And then here he goes aggressive again. He gives me a valuable fireball. I just defend fine. And interesting that I go with lumberjack there. I didn't necessarily even need lumberjack at all, would have died. But it's fine because, like, that wasn't necessarily a misplay. That was just kind of a choice because he still has to defend my lumberjack on my baby dragon. Otherwise, he would take his tower. And there, I'm thinking he over defended. Normally, I wouldn't play Royal Giant at the bridge like that, but since he over defended, I knew he was down elixir. So, and I had a good cycle, so I knew that um, Royal Giant Mega Minion would punish him because I had a good cycle and he was down elixir and he had a bad cycle. So do I go with Royal Giant in front of this? I feel like I shouldn't. Yeah, I just go with Baby Dragon in the back. That's fine. I think I Fireball this. Do I? Yeah. Okay, here's here's an, another thing. In a normal game, I would not have Fireballed that. The reason that I Fireballed it here is because it's lowers tower rule. So whoever, if I get more damage on his tower and it's a tie, then I win the matchup. So I went with that just because I knew that I could just defend for the rest of the game. Fireball cycle and win by the tie. So that was kind of my thought process with that fireball there. Where if this was not like tiebreaker rules, I would have gone with a Royal Giant in the back of the tower probably. So, I mean, from here on out, I'm pretty much just defending. I play Furnace just to block the E with it. I know that I have the game won as long as he doesn't get like any more hits on my tower. I play Royal Giant in the back. I mean, there's really no reason not to. I'm just playing. I'm playing my troops. Notice how I also space on my troops so that he can't lightning everything. Like he cannot hit us, hit the furnace and the mega menu with the lightning. He would have had to choose um, only one of them. And here I play E Wiz in the center just to. I play it so it'll go to the left lane. It's also a good play. And I mean, really, do I even need to show the rest of the game? It's pretty. It's pretty much one at this point. I do. I'm pretty sure I actually end up taking this tower. Yeah, I do take his tower. So that was a good victory. So yeah, I'm 7-0 in the Rano Cup. Um, I just showed you, these are the only two sweeps I had the whole Rano Cup, I think. And then I won my match today. This match was actually on stream, so if you want to go check it out on Revol's uh, MR stream, then feel free to go ahead. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something from it. I probably won't do this again unless he doesn't show my matches on stream, or unless um, you guys want me to, which, I'm thinking I'll just probably stick to the latter video. This is just kind of like a special video just for fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and Vulcan out.